Hello, and welcome to Genealogy Basics, brought to you by the Great River Regional Library. This course is designed as a beginning introduction to genealogy resources found online, through the library, and beyond. Feel free to follow along using your own computer or device, and to pause this video to give yourself time to play. I'm Wendy, and let's get started. I wanted to put together a class that would show people how to track down their family history without having to pay a fortune for it. I like free stuff! So we're going to look at how and where to start your research. We'll look at a few different resources that are available through the library, and also the free resources that are available on the internet. Keyword, free. So people are sometimes stuck right away in the beginning because they don't know where or how to start. The best place is to start at home. Everyone probably has some items already that will aid in your research effort. These can be documents like birth certificates, marriage certificates, passports, deeds, um, and photographs. Photographs not only document what family members look like, but often there is information written on the back of the photos. Traditionally, a family Bible was the place to document family tree information. If you have one of those laying around, you've got a gold mine. The best resource of all? Living family members. Aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents. Sometimes one of these relatives is a stockpile of information just waiting for someone to ask. There's an interviewing a family member handout available if you need some direction, and that will be posted with this recording. So what you're looking at in this slide is kind of a nutshell version of steps to take as a beginning family researcher, and it aids you to keep your head from exploding. It's easy to want to jump in and find everything there is to know about every family member all at once. This will probably prove to be overwhelming if you do this because there's so much information. So start with one person, find everything you can about that person, then move up the line to the next person. Stay in one family line at a time and document your findings so that it's easy to go back to where you left off and easy to find things back once you found them. There's a family group sheet available also attached to this presentation, and that's a great way to keep track of family members in the same line. There are many more forms available like this on the internet for free that can help with organization of information. So go through steps one through five for each person, just as the slide says, where you start with what you know, decide what facts you want to find, do you need their date of birth or what are you looking for, determine the kind of record you need, so if you're looking for a date of birth, you need a birth certificate. Record your results. Record where you looked. Record where you found it. Um, and decide what you want to find out next. Figure out what you can do at home. And then read about the areas where your ancestors lived. A lot of information can be learned from knowing the history of the area they came from. And may even give you clues as to why they left that area. Read about doing family research. Join a society if there's one that exists. Just keep digging. Next, let's take a look at some interesting resources that are available through the library. Books. Could we talk about library resources without mentioning books? There are great books available, including how-to books to guide you through your research and some that specialize in ethnicities or in DNA testing. A few great ones are Evidence Explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, the Unofficial Guide to Ancestry.com by Nancy Hendrickson, and Organize Your Genealogy by Drew Smith. These are great resources for getting started, definitely for the beginners. If you're getting into DNA testing, the Family Tree Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy by Blaine Bettinger is a must read. In addition to instructional books, the library carries reference books such as city directories dating back to 1894, Mayflower indexes, county histories, yearbooks, church histories, county plat maps, and more and more. You'll want to check your local branch to see what they have on their shelves, but these reference books can travel to other branches. In addition to what we have in the library, we can also request books from other libraries around the world using a worldwide catalog system called WorldCat. For example, I've requested and received a book of French-Canadian family names from the Quebec Public Library. I was able to use it for a month before sending it back to Canada, and many items can be sent to your local library, or the cooperating library will be able to photocopy or scan the information and email it to you, and most of the time, for free. I like to tell people, if you have a library card in one library, 
you have a library card in all of them. Speaking of library cards, do you have one? Library cards are free and you will need one to access some of this information on our website. If you don't have a library card yet, head on over to griver.org, click on Get Renew a Card in the upper right corner, then click on the words Apply for an e-card online and fill out that form. You'll be notified when your car is active and ready to use. Go ahead, push pause, I'll wait. Have your card? Great! Then let me tell you about databases. You can access Great Rivers databases by going to griver.org and clicking on Databases A through Z. There you will find some great resources for all kinds of research. So let's talk about some of the databases geared at genealogy research. The first one is Heritage Quest. Heritage Quest is an historic record database where census records can be found and saved digitally for printing or archiving. Census records are a treasure trove of family information and a snapshot of the family on a certain day in history. The St. Cloud Times Obituary Index is available for dates 1928 and newer online. Older indexes are available at the reference desk for in-house use only, or you can call or email the St. Cloud branch and ask us to look it up for you. Obituaries can contain valuable information about other family members and relationships, and also it's free. And the big one, Ancestry for Libraries. Have you ever wanted to use Ancestry.com but you didn't want to buy a subscription? Your library card just solved that problem for you. You have access to over 7,000 worldwide databases full of historical records and primary source documents by accessing Ancestry through the library. This is a wonderful tool to have available at your fingertips, all for the cost of a library card, which is free. So this is the part where you try it out. If you're playing along at home, go to griver.org. Click on Databases A through Z. They're listed alphabetically, except for the frequently used ones. You'll find those at the top. First, we're going to take a look at what Heritage Quest looks like. So here's what the Heritage Quest page should look like once you've signed in with your library card. Go ahead and click on Search Census if you're playing along. So I've done a search using my own family member, Joseph Warnicke, who I know lived in Stearns County in the 1940s. This is the result of that search. This is the Warnicke family in Millwood Township. Then I clicked on Joseph, the one who's age 43, and who matched up with the records of his birth year. And you'll see the results on the next page. And boom, here is the actual census record. The family is listed in the center of the page under Warnicke Joseph. The record gives us information on his wife and the kids that were living in the home and the census date, which is located at the top of the page. Information included on census pages are the ages, birthplaces, and occupations of each member. Some census pages include more or less information depending on the year of the census. Whenever possible, look at the actual records rather than relying on an indexed version. Sometimes the transcriptionist will miss information or misspell things because they're only human. So this slide is for you to take a pause and try it for yourself. Take some time to do a search in one of the databases and see what you find. So a couple of other sources we have at the library are microfilm and CDs. Census records are available on microfilm in the St. Cloud Library. Some of the census records in Heritage Quest or Ancestry might have missing records and the actual microfilm might be able to fill in a gap. Other newspaper records and census records can be requested from the county and state historical societies and then used in the library, including newspaper microfilm copies from the Minnesota Historical Society. We also have cemetery indexes on CD for Stearns, Benton, and Sherburne counties available at the reference desk of the St. Cloud branch to use in the library. So let's look at more of the fun stuff. Each of the sources that will be discussed are completely free sites. You will not need to enter personal or credit card information to use these sources. A truly free source will never ask you for financial information, but some will ask you to create a username and password. Also, beware, not everything you find on the internet is factual. Always look for documentation to back up any family information that you may find. Believe it or not, the best place to start a search is Google. 
I prefer to use Google Chrome as a web browser when doing genealogy searches because of the translation feature. To test this feature, type in google.de in the address bar. A page will load for Google Deutschland, Germany, and a pop-up at the top will ask you if you would like this page translated. When you click on translate in the upper right side of the screen, the page will then appear in English. This doesn't work for 100% of the websites you come across, but it is a very valuable tool to use if you are searching for family members in other countries. Click yes, the website will now be displayed in English. You've just accessed a free translator. So back to Google. Try typing in the name of an ancestor. When I do a Google search in the same name, Joseph Warnicke, that we used in the census record earlier, some of his information shows up. I get a find a grave listing, I get his obituary, and some pictures. Broad searches will probably give you a lot of information that doesn't pertain to the person you searched. The next slide will help narrow down those results. So if you put in a name and got a gazillion results, try adding quotations around the person's name, try using their full name, first, middle, last, or other things that might help narrow the results of your search. Using different versions of their name, like Fred instead of Frederick, can make a difference in the results. And adding a year may bring up a birth or a death record. Adding a city or state will also narrow the results. Different spellings of a last name or other things you can think of to search can make the difference between finding valuable information and coming up empty-handed. Give it a try. You may have to think outside the box a little. Okay, the next tool we're going to explore is FamilySearch.org. I love FamilySearch.org. Much of the same information is available here that is available on Ancestry.com, but having a FamilySearch account is free. FamilySearch works through volunteers who read, translate, and enter information from scanned documents and then compile it into a worldwide database that anyone can search. Some of the records will have documents you can download, some records will just be the data and the source listing they came from. FamilySearch automatically searches alternative spellings and sound alike names, sometimes a blessing, sometimes a curse, but you can limit your searches if you have too many results. This is also a great place to create your own online family tree. All of your information can be stored through this site for free. There are also records that are only available at FamilySearch affiliate sites. The good news is, Great River Regional Library is an affiliate. The downside is you do have to visit the library in person to view these special records. This is a very abbreviated list of some of the things that have been loaded into FamilySearch.org. There are many, many more collections included and it's growing every day as transcribers add records to this database. These include birth, death and marriage records, census records, probate records, immigration records, church records, the list is vast and you'll want to spend a lot of time exploring this website. You will need to set up a username and password to access this site, but there is no charge for the information. This is an example of a family tree that is saved in FamilySearch.org. The numbers you see after a person's birth and death date is a unique number assigned to each individual in the entire database. This helps cut down on the amount of duplicates for the same person and also helps link other people to your tree and yours to theirs. This is an individual listing example for a relative and his parents and siblings, which you get to by clicking on a person's name. This is the same setup as the family group sheet in the handouts, but this would be a digital version saved online. You can print these out off of the website if you'd like and have a paper copy of them. When you've searched an ancestor's name in FamilySearch and you click on the record, this is an example of what you'll see. This is a birth record from Germany without the scanned document attached. Inside the red circles, you'll see the information that was found on the original document itself. It also lists a citation record at the bottom, stating where the information was found. In this case, it was found on German microfilm reel 1050742. With this citation, you can be sure it is legitimate documentation, even though the actual record is not available. Try it if you're playing along at home. Start from the home page, then click on the search icon. 
you'll need to create an account to search. You can even set up your own family tree information and use this site to keep your research in one place digitally. So with the information we've already covered, you probably want to play with family search and ancestry all day, but there are more sites to explore. Stick with me. The next source we'll explore is RootsWeb. RootsWeb is another source for free information. It is a user-based website meaning that the only information available is the information submitted by the users. It is not user-friendly like some other sites are, but it contains very useful information as well as message boards that can be used to find information overseas. There are pages dedicated to each state, county, and some family names and other searchable factors. The downside to RootsWeb is that there can be ads on the pages, so be careful where you click and read before you click. This is a sample search I did in RootsWeb using message boards for the information on the town of Paderborn, Germany, where some of my family came from. Some people will post a city name and a surname to find information on a family from that area. This is a very helpful tool. Many people all over the world use this site and are very willing to share information. Let's talk about findagrave.com. Find a Grave is a free website that is compiled by volunteers who enter cemetery information, obituaries, and photographs of grave markers. This can be a great tool for verifying birth and death dates, as well as other family relationships. If you come across a family member's record that doesn't have a photo, you can click the Request a Photo button on the page and a volunteer will go out to the cemetery and snap a photo of the headstone for you, for free. On this site, you may find a memorial page that includes a short biography, family information, birth dates, death dates, photos of the person, photos of the headstone, as well as burial location. Obituary information can sometimes be found on these pages. Now again, this is a user-run database, so you'll want to find actual documentation to back up the information found here. But if you can't find a birth or a death record, sometimes you can find a headstone, that may at least give you a birth and death year. The next few slides are some examples of other searching tools that can be found on the internet that you may want to look for in the future. They may be for the more advanced researcher or handy if you hit a dead end or a brick wall as it's known. So this is a screenshot of Cindy's list. It might not look like much, but this is a powerful tool. Cindy's list is a repository of websites. It's every website that has to do with genealogy or historical research. I could spend an entire class just going through this website, and maybe that will be a class for later. But if you need new ideas on where to look for information, go to Cindy's list. So earlier in this class, I mentioned joining an association. This is an example of a really well put together family association webpage. It was found through Roots Web Searching. Some people with surnames in common have created their own clubs and are full of information on the family origin, military ranks and service, and other great information. Try doing a search of your last name and the word association and see if you get any results. So this is a more advanced tactic for locating family overseas. Search and email local historical societies and give them all the information you have about your ancestor. Many of these historical societies have people that volunteer to do searches. They're typically just as excited to find people as you are, but be sure to give credit to these people if you post the information in your family tree somewhere. Here's my own story. I got a pen pal. I was looking for records in the Paderborn area of Germany and it was coming up empty handed. I started thinking that if I'm a person who loves to look up information for other people, surely there must be other people like me in the world. So I started contacting historical societies in Germany and it didn't take me long to find one. So what you see here is the result. This is a scan from a church book in Germany from 1847. It was found at the Paderborn Historical Society. My pen pal looked it up for me, scanned the records, and sent me the scans out of the actual church record book. I used Google Translator to communicate with him in Germany, and it was priceless information I never would have gotten without this person doing the footwork for me. There are so many great free websites out there to explore, but there just isn't enough time to go through them all. So you're going to have to do a little exploring on your own. Go on, leave no stone unturned. 
With all this new information at your fingertips, you're ready to start digging into your roots. Good luck on your adventure. If you need help or have questions, contact your local library by phone or by email. If you enjoyed this program, please let us know. If we can improve it, please let us know that too. If there's a genealogy topic you'd like to see as an online program, let us know that. Thanks for watching and happy hunting!